KRX and new tender springs happening. All right, guys, so uh, everybody has a problem with the sag, and they're supposed to fix the sag or the, the spring's getting weak. Actually, I don't really have a problem with that, and I really don't have a problem with the ride, but I met somebody on the trail, and they was like, oh, man, do you have tender springs? And I'm like, no. He's like, you got to get them. It's amazing the difference. So I got them. I reached out to All Things UTV, and uh, I paid full price for them, got the springs coming, and I just wanted to highlight them because they're a small business. They're in Alabama, right next door to us, and they're very, they, they want your business, and it seems like they want, they want to earn your business. So that means a lot to me, and it seems to me like when you deal with small businesses, they go above and beyond to try to make you happy, and I like that also. So I'll leave a link to the part in the description below. below. All right, now let's get to the install. So I looked on the internet, on YouTube, and I just didn't really find a video that I liked for this. It didn't put bolt on wrench and didn't show you how to do it. And I, I just want to try to do it better. So let me know how I do. All right, guys, I'm going to spin around and show something where I'm at right now. Okay, this is the tender spring that I'm replacing. Now, I got to take the shock off to do this, and I'm going to show you the problem I've already ran into. So here is the top nut on the shock. I had to take the hood off to get to it. There we are, there it is. Now, this was, th this bolt is really, really tight. So what I wanted to show you is I put a wrench on the back side of it, let it rest itself here. I couldn't get the box in on it, had to put the open in. And then I got a long cheater pipe. <laughs> That's the only way I can get it broke loose. So I'm gonna show you a little bit how I worked it. All right, so I got it. The wrench on the boat on the back side and it's on there tight and then I got my ratchet on it I make sure it's up against it's flat got my cheater pipe on it <clears throat> see with a cheater pipe it's even tight just wanted to show you that part right there. all right so for those of you that's like you're getting ahead of yourself if you don't know to do this I know I gotta jack my machine up and get the tires where they're barely off the ground to take the tension off the shocks. I know that, that's what I'm gonna do, but I'm breaking this loose first. The reason is because I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna pick this up with my tractor and I don't have room to get in here with my tractor under it. So that's what I'm doing, just so you know. I remember my wife was like, excellent choice on a shirt for a video. Out on bail. <laughs> oh, she was like, honey. So nothing really fancy here. Uh, the mountain boat for the back is there and the mountain boat here was there. Nothing really hard to get to. And on the bottom, I've already broke my drive shaft before, so I've already had all this apart, so the bottom wasn't hard to get off. And it was easier to get to. Okay, this is day two of putting the springs on. No, it didn't take me that long. Actually, it got dark on me. I put the two sides or one side of the springs on. And I did figure out one thing that was, uh, that <laughs> I feel stupid for letting it whoop me, but I put all the weight off the wheel, got the springs or the shocks undone, and I couldn't get the shock out. I tried everything in the world to do it. I tried collapsing the springs. It still didn't work. So all I had to do was push the tire down. And when I pushed the tire down, it just opened the gap up and I just lifted the, the shock right out. But I didn't know that. So if you guys do this, um, <laughs> Remember, you just push the tire down a little bit more and, and it just drops that little bit and you, the shock comes out. So I'm gonna show you, I got one side on and then I'm gonna show you the other side, what the difference is when it looks like on the machine. And then when I take the other shocks off, I'm actually gonna show you how I took the springs on it off and on. The back, I didn't need the spring collapser, but on the front, I did. So let me go around and show you this. So here's the back side that's done. The spring is actually doesn't look much different when it's on here. It is a bigger diameter and it is a harder spring to compress. I'll show you on the other side. This crossover ring was already bottomed out at the bottom and I didn't have much ring. So I actually gained a lot of space there for this shock to travel. What happens is this actually comes up and this is where it had to stop. So that's all the bottom spring could travel before it bottomed out. It would just hit and kunk. So now it's got further to go, and with this stiffer spring, it probably won't never go that far anyway. So I'm gonna show you, let me tell you this, I, I adjusted my spring from the top right here 
to the top of my spring eight inches and that worked for me and that's a good starting point for you and I'm gonna actually put that on on the bench and then put the, the spring or a whole shock in let me show you the front Now the front is a huge difference in the look. I got a lot more spring left. And from that same spot down to here on top of my spring, I put four inches. The manual called for three inches, but three just didn't quite get me what I wanted and four worked for me. It might be different on your machine. The back called for taking the tension out of the spring on the back and then adding one inch of preload. I added a lot more on that. But the back's easy to adjust on the front. It's, you're supposed to have to take your shock out, but I actually collapsed my spring with my tool I got at Harbor Freight, that little $24 deal, it was on sale. Collapsed it and was able to do it there. Let me show you what the other side looks like. See so here, let me bump the camera around. So here, that's all the travel I got before this bottom spring bottoms out there on this side and on the other one that's way up there. And this spring is a huge difference on the front, huge difference. Let's go to the back. So here's the back. And like I said, here's the travel I have from here to here on the back. Now that, that crossover ring is set up a lot further. I'm really thinking this is gonna make a big difference. I'm kind of excited to try it. Okay, guys, so here is, and it's got an F on it for front. This way, all things UTV does, just to where you keep them straight. And there's the difference between the front springs, my stock, and the new ones. Big difference, and it's a bigger diameter spring as well. Okay, here's my front shock assembly, and I've got it out on my workbench or my table out in the yard. Not a workbench, exactly. And this is really dirty. I've washed it, but you just can't really get it clean. So I'm wiping it real good and I'm gonna oil it. And that's, we're just penetrating oil to make this thread a lot easier to turn. It'll take me a drift. Actually, it's something I made and I'm gonna knock this loose and then spin it up where I get my spring off. I got that loose, I'm gonna go ahead and spin this up. I do have the spanner wrenches, but I tried to get it loose with the other one, it just wasn't working for me. On the other spring I done. I see I'm shaking the camera. It's not a good thing. Actually, I gotta collapse my spring. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse it now. This takes a three quarter socket. <laughs> Skippy, that's enough. That's my dog, Skippy. Named him Skippy Zeta. Broke hip when we got him, and his doctor said it was too late to do anything about it. So what better name could you get than Skippy? Because he skips when he walks and runs. All right, three quarter, and you want to tighten them. Say so you want to try to keep it straight. Hey, Penny, trying to do a YouTube video here. No dogs. And I just tighten them down.
And I found it easier if I kind of hold on this, this knuckle as I'm collapsing them. And since the reason I'm doing this is I got to collapse the springs anyway to get the other ones on, you only have to do this on the front. So might as well do it now. All right, guys, you get the picture. I'm not going to bore you with this. So now I've got my spanner wrench. I've got my tension off my spring, so it makes this a lot easier to turn. I'll just turn this and get it loose. Again, I don't want to bore you with it, but I just want to tell you. And I think I got these from Wright Coast Off-Road. They're like $25 for a set of these. It's kind of hard to see, but we've got a pretty wide pry bar here. And I'm sticking it in. There's a rubber boot in here that's got to slide down to allow my spring to come off. So I slide it down. Okay, got it out. We'll try to demonstrate something or show you. All right, here's my spring that I'm keeping and using. Set it to the side, wipe the mud out of it. Clean all this off. Okay, if you just saw, this is my spring. This big spring went right here. Okay, right here is a crossover ring stop. If you can see that. Let me spin this up. Where I can show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, this is why I'm definitely not a spring expert. But this is why I think this, the tender springs is going to help so much and why they help. So my, my shot, let me back up, my spring sits right here. And it slides up and down with the spring in between here when you're riding down well, or riding. So then when you hit one of them hard bumps and you feel that, uh, that solid, uh, what it is is this is hitting right there. And with this taller and stouter spring, I can adjust this crossover stop up further like it's supposed to be. And then it's going to give it more travel up and down the shock. So it's going to give you a lot more spring travel. There we go. Take that off. There's my old spring. There's my new spring. Huge difference. There's a split in these springs right here where the end of the spring is. We want to set the other one at 180 degrees. Again, I'm cleaning my mud off. Since I got this new spring, it's a lot longer. I got to get more clearance. And that still may not get me what I need. Might be able to get this. Here's my retaining clip. 
it just goes through the slot here the, the shock shaft goes through the slot here and then it drops back and the spring when I undo the spring it's going to fall right back there on it and again I want to make sure that the two spring ends right here from the top spring and the bottom spring are 180 out that means one on each side let's release some tension actually it comes came with real good instructions on how to do this Especially if you read them, because I didn't really read mine the first time. And I'm going to try to preset this shock before I put it on, just like my other one. Trying to make sure that that spring goes in my retaining cap like it's supposed to. And it's going. I'm also going to take my big bar and slide this rubber stopper back down. where it's supposed to go. All right, there it is. Okay, here's my crossover rings. And I took, what I done was took a piece of, um, let me see, make sure I'm looking at this good. A piece of round stock and flatten the edges on a grinder. That way I can hit that and knock it loose. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna spin these. I'm gonna set mine four inches from the top of my spring. So I'm gonna bring it up there to four inches. And I got this one, I preset it to four inches from the top of my shock to the bottom or top of my spring to four inches also. That's why I got the other side and it looks like it's gonna do well. This is a two ring system here and the other side you have to knock loose also actually it wasn't as tight as my other one and you just gotta keep spinning them until I get it where I want it then I'm gonna lock them together now that I got it where I want it, I'm going to lock these two together. And all you do is just snug one to the other. That's it. Now it's time to go put it in the oil, take my coil spring tensioner off, and go put it on the machine. Also, I'm going to put a little anti-sleeze. Actually, anti-seize. We just call anti-sleeze playing, joking. On both ends of my shock holes just so if I ever have to take them off I don't want them to be froze up in there Man, those shocks are heavy so if you go to Harbor Freight looking for these this is what I used really really neat two-piece McPherson strut compressor set All right, so on to our rear shock. And this rear shock is actually the easiest shock, I guess because it's a longer shock. I, I, I don't know why, but it is easier. You don't have to have these spring clamps, but since I do have them, I'm going to compress this spring, just make it easier to work with. Then once I get it compressed, then I'm going to change my tender spring. And I'll, I'll walk you through those steps. But I'm not going to bore you with compressing this. I'm just going to do it on each side and pull it even my other spring i found out what works best for my machine is right here from this collar i measured and it's eight inches to the top of the spring my other one was 10 the original so i'm gonna bring this up to eight from the top of my spring to be right there and then i'm gonna adjust my crossover ring right here 
So that's where I'm at, and I just take once I got the tension off the spring there, it's pretty easy to turn it with this spanner wrench. And once it gets loose, I can just spin it by hand the rest of the way. Again, I'm not going to bore you with that. Go ahead and turn it, and I am putting a little oil on it. I cleaned it best I could, and I'm keeping a little oil on it to help it turn easier also. Okay, I've already slid this, but I took a flat pry bar like this, and I stuck it in here and slid my this rubber stopper up. I kind of worked it, slid it up. Now my spring's compressed, so I take the slack out, and this piece right here that holds the spring on just kind of falls right out. I'm going to clean that up before I put it back on. don't really know why, because it's going to get really dirty again, but... Then my spring compressed, I'll just take all this off together. And here's this spacer in the middle. Taking it off. Here's my old spring. And here's my new spring that's marked with the R. Actually, I need to take time to clean that shaft up right there so I can get to it a little better. Right above my crossover ring where they're going. Put this up where it goes. Cleaning this piece off. Sliding it in place. Taking my spring, putting it back on. Taking this piece, putting it back on. Then I'm gonna release the tension on this spring and voila, and I'm gonna make sure my springs are setting 180 degrees apart, like we talked about on the last one. As I'm taking this tension off, I'm making sure that my spring is set right. Anyway, I'm gonna release the tension of this spring, make sure it's seat, and make sure, make sure it's seated like it's supposed to be. And I'm gonna make sure my springs are 180 degrees apart. Okay, so once I got my spring on, then I'm gonna push this back down to the bottom. That's right where I wanted that. I'm gonna tighten it down. And like I said, for my machine, eight was a good starting point for me. Well, actually, I started with nine on the other one and it wasn't quite good enough. And then I adjusted the other one to eight and that works good for me. Let me snug this. And I'm gonna adjust my crossover shaft to give me my spring a little more travel. Now guys, I definitely am not an expert on this. So go easy with the criticizing. You see what's wrong here? Put this piece in backward. Like I said, or upside down, I'm not an expert by all means but luckily i caught my mistake so i'm gonna compress my spring take this back out flip it around the way it's supposed to go or the same mistakes were made okay so i got the springs installed it was supposed to have a 16 and a half inch clearance in the front and 16 in the rear 
Well, I actually, I kind of got it flipped. I got 17 in the rear and 16 in the front. But I'm gonna make a ride or two on them first and make sure they're not settled or let them settle before I do my final adjustments on them. Plus, I got a camper over there and I, I just barely got enough room for it to clear the front to go in. So I'm gonna have to make sure that it clears there too. So guys, uh, give uh, All Things UTV a, a shot. Uh, I was really impressed with how fast they sent these shocks or these springs out. Wow and support your local business that's what i like to do and uh, that's i wish you guys do the same thing find your local place and 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 help them out a little bit all right guys thanks for watching please subscribe